I showed you how to do graphs using the x and y intercepts. Now what I want to show you is how to graph using the slope and the y intercept. So remember, first thing we need to do before to put it to find to do graph using the slope and y intercept, you have to put it into the form, slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Which you guys need to remember this format and always remember that our m represents our slope and our b represents our y intercept. Now Looking at this equation, this is not in the same format as that equation. So that's why I originally showed you how to just solve using the xy intercepts. You just plug in zero and find the intercepts. However, a lot of times you're going to get intercepts that are fractions, and it's not going to be very easy to get a very accurate graph using that method. So another method we can use is transforming our equation into slope-intercept form and graphing it from there. So to transfer this to slope-intercept form, what I noticed is I have solved for y. My y variable is by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do the exact same thing on this equation. I'm going to circle my variable, so therefore that's going to remind me I have to solve for this variable. That means I'm going to have to undo all the operations that's happening to it. And if you remember, when we undo our operations, we always want to undo addition and subtraction first. So I look at my variable and I say, what are, what are the two operations that Well, it's being multiplied by 2, and it's also being added by 5x. So to undo addition of 5x, I'm going to subtract 5x. Therefore, I'm left with 5x minus 5x becomes 0. So I'm not going to write my 0, but I have 2y equals negative 5x plus 8. Remember, we cannot combine our 8 and 5x because they are not like terms. We do not know the value of x, so we cannot combine them. Now, I still do not have my y by itself. It is still multiplied by 2. So I'm going to have to undo the multiplication by dividing by 2. And I'm going to do it on both sides of the equation, which is division property of equality. I get y equals a negative 5 halves plus 8 divided by 2, which is, going to, is 4. Sorry, that's 5, negative 5xx. So, um, y equals negative 5 halves x plus 4. So to go ahead and graph this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up. I'm going to find the y. I'm sorry. Before I go ahead and graph this, I need to determine what my slope and y-intercept are. Using my previous equation, I know that slope is going to equal a negative 5 halves. And y-intercept is going to equal when y is equal to 4. So, to go ahead and find the first thing I need to do is I'm going to find the, the y-intercept. So the first thing you always want to start off with is where does it start? And that's going to be your y-intercept. So I'm going to go up to the y-intercept, which is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And I make a nice big dot there. Because I know the y-intercept where it crossed the y-axis. So I know this point is on the graph. Now, the next thing we figure is the slope. Well, we know the slope is a negative 5 halves. So how is that going to relate to my graph? Well, what the slope tells you, remember the slope is the change in y over the change in x between any two points. So if I have one point, I know that the change in y is going to be negative 5 over 2. So I can go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then over 2. OK? Because this is going to be a negative 5 over 2. You remember that when you're doing your change in y over change of x, Remember, when I make a negative change in y is negative, that means you're going down. Or you could also make the change in x or change of x negative, which would basically be going to the left. Either way, either way, what you guys can see is this graph is exactly the same as the one I previously did with the x and y intercepts. Okay? So all I did was I found my y intercept, and then I used a slope triangle to go ahead and um, find my next point. So this was negative 5, and this was over 2. Now, you could also have done the slope triangle the other way to go back upwards. I kind of ran out of kind of space in my graph, but in another video, I'll show you guys um, how to do that. So that's how you graph using the slope and the y-intercept.